I have Mike Glover here. He has released a book <laughs> called Prepared, a manual for surviving the worst case scenario. Mike Glover, great to have you here on the show. I'm tired of talking about this fucking book. <laughs> We can talk about uh, it. No, I mean, I, I, yeah, we, we have to talk about it a little bit. I mean, what else? Wait, let's talk about some other shit before we get into this, which is... Um, Did you do this yet? Yeah, I love this shit. Keto IQ. I feel like this is illegal. Like Jeff okay. Wu is making some shit. This is illegal. I, I think it is. I think it's... Wait a minute. No, it's it's completely legal. By the way, there is no paid sponsorship by Keto Ketone IQ. Uh, Jeff Wu... And who do you remember the SF guy that he worked with? Oh, uh, uh, Travis. Anyway, tenth group guy, awesome dude. Mountain locker guy. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. Um, but they, they developed this. this with DARPA. Yep, and which scares me. I'm telling you right now, I have a limited experience with Adderall because, you know, <laughs> whatever that is, uh, very limited, and <laughs> this. When I fast, so I fast all the way through like to four or five p.m. To oh, you're doing that long of I a do, fast? Yeah, I do that. You look so, super skinny. Well, today, dude, I ran for like two hours. Oh, and I well, I'm, I got to do Cam Hayes' podcast in like a week, so I got to fucking train. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. No, when I so when I fast, the majority of the day, which yeah. is what I do, and then I take. Two, three, three of these, depending on how the day is going. It's rocket fuel. It, dude, it is rocket fuel. So caffeine, ketone. Uh, the the thing with this is there's science behind it. And that's the thing that I like about it. The Heberman, is that his name? Oh, uh, uh, Andrew Heberman. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess he's a huge proponent of this. Either way, fasting, caffeine, and ketone IQ, I'm telling you. Yeah. I, I don't know what. It's next level. I I do not know what 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 speed feels like because I've never gone into that world in any way, shape, or form. But I do know it is next level. The mental clarity, the amount of energy, focus, fucking next level. So, it's just one of the rare few products that I actually pay for. Yeah, Which, Jeff, I, you need to hook it up, man. Come I, on, dude. I have uh, well, I mean, I have so much of the Wolf Twenty One. My CBD stuff, CBD, the, CBN, the yeah. sleep, yeah, bed uh, down. Is that what it is? Bed, bed down. down yeah. So, like, I have that, but I have so much of that. My wife was like, "Are you dude. just getting subs of it, and they're just sending you like?" Well, my wife had a sub, and then you gave me a bunch. Oh yeah, then, yeah, yeah. So then I have a bunch it's of it stacking. It stacks up. Yeah. So you've been selling it to get keto IQ. No, man, I've been giving it to people homeless people because i want them to sleep better it <laughs> seems like i saw i have this whole i have this whole corner. philosophy maybe this is like a sleep issue yeah maybe they have like a sleep sleep issue that's the main thing you know like they're just not getting good sleep so i was just going out handing out why are you man. so skinny i haven't I, seen you in a while why are you so skinny i've been right running now? man i've been fasting but why what's running. going on um what is going on? I I think. Did you change like a you did a like a lifestyle shift? I shifted. I've yeah, never man. seen you so skinny. I you're like in marathon shape right now. Are you running? I ran an hour and forty minutes today. Oh, like, so like two miles. Are you just getting back into <laughs> running? <laughs> yeah, man. I want to run. Like I I've always I've always loved running. And uh, it, where are you running at? Around Salt Lake. Yeah, I ran up. I ran around town today, like ran into the office from my house, shit like oh, that. Yeah. That's awesome. It's like, like I, I love to run. I always have. It's just, I've always had like Achilles injury, like Achilles tendonitis or patella tendonitis or you name the injury. Uh -huh. And and now you feel healthy. And well, what, what I found was fasting, like the single most beneficial thing I've ever done in my life is fasting. Same. Health. Same. Focus. Yeah. And C so keeping I, the calories down. Dude, I, I found that and then I cut a bunch of weight. Yeah. So I dropped like 15 pounds and then I feel good now. I feel like I can run. So you feel light. I feel light. Yeah. Uh, and now it, it, it honestly, it's, it's, it's the, uh, it's the flywheel effect because yeah. you feel lighter, you go out and you do something that you really love. It makes you feel better. And then you're like, you know, it's just left, right, yeah. left, right, left. You start knocking it down. You're fasting. You're slamming, you know, ketone IQ, drinking some espresso. It's awesome. This summer, you can help Black Rifle Coffee and the boot campaign raise $1 million for veterans. 
All you need to do is grab a can of ready-to-drink coffee from local grocery or convenience stores. From May 31st through August 31st, every can of ready-to-drink coffee you buy will contribute to making this massive donation possible. As one of the top veteran-focused nonprofits in the country, the Boot Campaign is on a mission to provide life-changing aid and benefits to veterans suffering from invisible wounds like post-traumatic stress. Each can you drink gets us closer to hitting a million dollars for vets. So grab a can of Black Rifle ready-to-drink coffee from the BRCC website or your local grocery or convenience store. Let's raise a can together and keep fueling Americans for a good cause. Do you do you uh, do you beat pavement? This is my interview, motherfucker. Like, oh, why are it? you trying to interview me? Oh, like this is. <laughs> <laughs> I do anything. I do anything. You you be, just beat it all. Mm-hmm. And I think. Well, the other thing I've been doing. I, my kids are on summer break, so I didn't realize that. I, I was wondering why I was so freaking busy outside. They um, they can ride their bikes and they run. Yeah. So it's like cruising around the neighborhood. Yeah. They ride their bikes. I run. Like it's awesome. And I want to get back into it. I used to be big into it, but I got some hamstring woes. Well, that's the thing. It's like injury, uh, yeah. Then weight gain, then you know it 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 continues to compound, yeah. And like now, I I can go to a point where it's like, hey, I know my cutoff point. I'm 160 pounds. Like that that's 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 what God. I weigh. That's what I will weigh the rest of my Magical life. Magical weight. That's a running weight for me. That's that's like perfect where, weight where where I sit healthy. If I'm below, like if I'm 155, 150, I know that I'm. I know that if I'm going to go out and run a big a big run, like a yeah. lot of – like we'll, we'll say a marathon, right? Yeah. 10 miles, like whatever. I'm 160 pounds. Like yeah. be, take it. But if I'm going to go out and I'm going to train for something that's going to put a lot of miles on my body, like I'll cut it down to 150. Are you going to do that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. Yeah. So huh. I, my – um, you know, my wife's a big runner and – like, you know, she's run a bunch of marathons and some ultras and stuff. How do you know so, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. elite level runner or just? Was, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, huh. you know. I, what I was your two mile time in the army? My best one ever? Yeah. Uh, gosh, what was it? I think it was like 10. What? Yeah. Oh, Tens? yeah. Tens? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you were that guy. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm oh. yeah. I, uh, the, only, the only guy that beat me by literally two maybe two seconds was a guy that won best ranger the year before so you're and that I guy got, who I, runs 10 two miles tens yeah and oh i, I my mean God. my my 10 mile time was sub one hour dude so i was still knocking down sub sixes on a 10 oh you're a different level runner so my best run two mile run time was 23 minutes <laughs> <laughs> two miles, it was man. i think straight up my best time was twelve fifteen. Yeah, and that's and eleven. I think at the time when we were in, you early weighed like two hundred pounds. I was. I'm way more than two hundred pounds. No, then. Oh, I was way more than two hundred pounds, Stephen. Seriously, I was two. I've always been two fifteen to two twenty five, and then where are you at right now? Two thirty. Two thirty. Two thirty. I lost about ten pounds. I got an eye for your weight. I you I, you know dude, I got an eye. Like, wow. I know how to. I know how to guess your weight. That's if impressive. We were, if we were in a circus and there was money to be made. <laughs> And he was Mike Glover. I guess his weight. I'll fucking I'll <laughs> nail it every time. Come in? I'll, I'll nail this every time. You know Damn, what I mean? Two thirty. Every time. I was two forty, like probably two and a half months ago. I started lifting, and just I bulk up, man. I can't yeah. lift weights. Why? Wait, it makes me hu- It makes me massive. It makes you massive. Massive. I just can't <laughs> lift. I hold weight and I hold water, and I just can't do it. So, doing more calisthenic, like I did hot sauna today. I I ran ran today, and that's making me feel better. What about hot yoga? You throw down on. I that? used to do that. I love that. Yeah, it's so good, dude. It, uh, my my back is like, like your your back and my back were probably like if we put them on an X ray. It's we, the same. It's the same same. Yeah, like I have a hard time like like just turning my neck to the right sometimes. You know, where I'm like, hey, I, what's up? I blew my neck out drying off my back when I threw <laughs> the towel over and it caught the top of my head and ripped it down and blew my shit out. Cam Haynes, I'm supposed to be doing his podcast. What is it called? Shoot, lift, lift, yeah, yeah. shoot, run. Yeah, yeah, lift, mm-hmm. shoot, run, or run, lift, shoot. I'm run, sorry. lift, shoot. I'm messing that up. Sure, but you, you do all the things. 
and I love it. I think it's really cool. I, I think it's really creative. Are you shoot bows or, or shoot rifles? bows? I, I dude, I thought it was rifles, and I was like, yes. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, it's bows. I'm like, oh, shit. Sure. But he's gonna teach me some stuff. Ah, cool. I need to learn from the experts. I asked Dudley to teach me, but Dudley's too busy, man. He's, he is. Way he's too doing busy. everything. Yeah, so he's way too busy. I'm, I'm gonna run with him and try my you best. You are. To You're gonna run stuff. with with yeah. Cam. That's I'll lift joke. some weights. I'll yeah. throw some shit. Um, but I'm not going to be lifting that boulder up the mountain. I'm sorry, Cam. No. I can't. I can't. Well, Matt, Matt said the same thing. Matt was like, I've got to go to do Cam's. Did he do it? No. he. He's going so to do it, though. He's going to do it. So yeah. he's scheduled to go up there at the same time you're there. Really? Yeah, same time you're there. Are we doing sh- – are we – oh, wait a minute. He might have fell out. I was like a backup. I was like the backup guy. Oh, really? Yeah, somebody fell out, and maybe it was, maybe it was Matt. Hmm. Supposed to be uh, – we have, we have this other thing that we're trying to Matt and I are doing this other thing. Uh, we're, we're going to go meet with a, a fairly well-known YouTuber on, uh, uh, that's, that's got a fight coming up in August. I don't know if you, Oh, I know yeah. who that is. Yeah. What are you going to do with him? Oh, fuck. We don't know. Well, have Matt fight him as like a preliminary. Matt preliminary. Would get his head kicked in. Dude, that, that dude, dude is, is fucking. Did legit. you get to meet him? No, can, we can't talk about him. No, we better not talk about. It. I'll, oh. I'll talk about it later, but it's fine. I, okay, we, everybody can know. I mean, it's it, these are the people that buy our copy either way. I yeah. just don't want to. I don't want to totally spill the beans on it. Jake, you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. He's rad too. I heard he's. I've heard really he's cool. like super cool guy, yeah. man. Like and Jeff, our mutual friend, the keto IQ. Yeah, ketone ketone IQ. I keep saying keto, but uh, it's ketone IQ. Like Jeff, he you know he's just like business manager or some yeah some shit. i figured yeah yeah and so we're just going down to figure out like w- what kind of cool shit can we do it's awesome. it's awesome he moves the needle and he's i like his attitude man i mean people try to hate him hate him it's like people hate, hate everybody him. he's knocking people the f out people hate everybody all the time and the, the world is such an angry fucked up place like here's a here's it's so gross it's, it's just fucking stupid so like here's a here's a funny here's a here's a funny story. So I'll tell you the story about what happened to me two weeks ago. So for two months I've been preparing to go to Normandy to jump into Normandy with uh, Jericho and Logan and for the D Day D-Day. invasion. And it's a static line jump. Yeah, but we we had a free fall scheduled for after. Yeah. So I've been prepping my kids for two months. Like it's gonna be awesome. You guys are gonna love it. You're We're gonna be. You're gonna go to Europe. You're gonna go to Europe. So. Like you're, you know, six and nine. We're gonna go from the beaches of Normandy. We're gonna go through all the different main battlefields. Oh. We're gonna go, you know, to I the bet they Somme. were studying super. All this yeah, stuff. yeah. No, no. I had them. We we were like watching documentaries. Oh. We we're doing the whole thing. So we get to the airport, ready to fly out a couple weeks ago. Uh, what airport? Here, Salt Lake. Okay. And um, you need ninety days on your passport past your date of return so your passport has to be valid for 90 days past your date of return to get into paris to get into france what yeah yeah so if you're i didn't know if that it either. respires today you got you got you need 90 days you need 90 past days past the day what yeah that's kind of crazy and so i get everybody there everybody's there at the airport so wife kids everybody's ready to go to france we're gonna have a few days there we're gonna go through all the battlefields it's gonna be epic, it's gonna be epic. they're gonna watch you know their dad jump out of, you know, an era appropriate plane in in uniform, do it a static yeah. line jump out in the middle of fucking nowhere with all the other guys. Like it's gonna be epic. And we're gonna do the whole thing. And it's and it's over the top cool. Like the one of the most patriotic pro American things you can do is go to Normandy for the D Day anniversary. They still line the streets. Line the streets. And they turned us around. They're like, you can't go. So how, what do you like? They're just like, Hey, you can't, yeah. Can't get the kids on. So I was like, ah, uh, well, I'm not going to go. If my kids can't go, yeah, like, I, that's just not like, they just got out of school the day before. Did so. they cry? Yeah. So oh, I got two no. little girls are crying. It's like, Hey, where's no. the next place we can go? I was like, don't care where all our bags are sitting right there. So I'm like, I don't care where we we've got, we're packed for a two week trip. Yeah. They're like, San Fran. That was that was the next 
plane going out, and I was like, "Really? Well, go from Normandy to San Fran?" Oh uh, no! But here's the it? thing, dude. No, what well, what I wanted to do so instantly. So t- here's the thing about. I think you guys like you and I. One, yeah. we can make a decision. Flex hard, like flex hard yep. on a fucking second. Yeah. Like, it, I didn't. I didn't need ten seconds to make this decision. Yeah, it was like we're going to the redwoods. Like yep. it, it, it wasn't even like it, it was, it was a discussion because obviously you've got, I had my wife, I had my kids and I was like, Hey, we can't go here, but guess what's so epic. The you redwoods. guys, the Redwood national forest. It is epic. It's epic. It's epic. It's epic. It's like every kid's dream when they see the picture of the car Dude, driving through the tree. That's what we did. We, I was like, <laughs> we're going to go drive through a tree. That's what I was like. Hey guys. And did they get hyped? Worry. Did they get, yeah, then they got stoked oh. because my daughter is going through this. She's also, my oldest is going through this ramen phase. Okay. So did you say ramen? Ramen loves it. <laughs> so, so I'm an expert. I, like, ramen. Exactly. For so many different reasons. Yeah. But instantly I had. The decisions, right? It's like what, what? It was like St. Louis, Missouri, which, by the way, Missouri is fucking beautiful. But we've already been out to Missouri because we're yeah. good friends with you know Bass Pro back and Cabela's. I just yeah. got back from there. I'm like, like as much as I love you know Big Cedar and Missouri, like we we we're yeah. not doing that. But Redwoods, pivot hard. Yeah, my my daughter loves ramen. She's going through this huge ramen phase. I'm like, Same what way. has the best Chinatown? Literally in in the United States, San Fran, San Fran, dude. Yeah, like so did you guys do it? Pivot, got on the plane, went to San Fran, went like flew in, you know, booking a fucking hotel on the way down there. Yeah, getting a rental car, the whole nine. Like everything's like click, click, click. Get into San Fran, go straight to the like, unpack our bags, go straight to ramen. Cruise around Chinatown for like three and a half, four hours. Awesome. It was epic. They got to watch, you know, where the 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 fortune cookie was made. Like, oh. like it was so cool, man. We went down to the pier. We saw the seals. We did the whole thing. Yeah. And oh, by the way, so I'm expecting this to be like just the craziest woke circus. Yeah. It actually wasn't that bad. No, man. Like I, I yeah. was like. Fully expecting the worst. I'm like, oh Jesus. There's only cares? a couple places that are. That yeah, bad. yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. If if you were to like tune in, and just kind of like, which which most of the time we are right in social media, like you would think that there's just like human shit everywhere. And yeah, like people throwing people. Feces yeah, at yeah, you. exactly. Right. Yeah. No, nah, man. Like you got in, got an Uber to the hotel, went to Chinatown, hung out for you know a day, then we hit the road. We were like. You know, going Is out the Medis- coast. Med- 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 Medicino? Medicino. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was awesome. That's exactly what So we dope. So dope. Oh, In Northern God. California. I get chills. I love that place. It's Northern so beautiful. Northern California is beautiful. And it's cheap. It's actually it's really cheap. cheap. And it's full of a bunch of people like you and I. It was yeah. like four by fours like and Asians? American flags. Like if we were to have a baby, of course it would be like a, what do they call those F2 poodles that are like half Asian, <laughs> half white, half white. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know what the F series poodle <laughs> would be. <laughs> Did you eat ramen? Yeah, dude. Did well, you actually fucking, eat ramen? Yeah, of course. Okay, okay. Like I threw you down, partook. man. Threw down. How long was this experience? I mean, we were on the road for a week. Holy shit. So we drove up all the way. So I went from San Fran, cruised up all the way. Uh, Northern California, like hit a ton of beaches, went through Avenue of the Giants. Went and you went Redwoods. to the Redwoods. So like, yeah, man, we went through. Did we you drive through, through the a tree? tree? Yeah, of course. Fuck I was like, yeah. we drove through the tree. And the whole thing is like, and we're driving around. I'm like, big trees. Check these trees out. Big trees. <laughs> California biggins. Check these California biggins. My kids are just like, <laughs> you're a fucking idiot. And I they bet they loved, loved it. it though. Yeah, dude. Did they, they, were... they still wood? Like, you oh know how there's God. wood scattered? And they're like, oh no, my God. You didn't? No, no. No, they you tell me later. But they were they were they were swimming in the Pacific Ocean, which is like it's beautiful thirty degrees, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's like a fucking though. ice bath. Yeah. So, I'm we're in Oregon. We're on the beach. We're in the middle of fucking nowhere. We're we're in um, just north of Lincoln City, and um, Glass Beach. Did you go to? Yeah, that, we went to yeah, Glass Beach. Yeah. That's Fort Bragg, I think. Yeah, Fort we did Bragg, the whole yeah. thing, bro. Yeah. And there's nobody out there. No, nobody goes there. Nobody goes there. It's like ghost towns, yeah. motels that. It, 
like shut down 30 years ago. Like it, nobody's out there. We stopped at the Avenue of the Giants in this park, which is absolutely beautiful, by the way. Like walked through the forest for like an hour, found a section of the river that was like nobody was out there. Yeah. And just swam. And nobody was there, dude. That's so nobody. awesome. As nobody a family. came out there. As a family, we just swam in the river, hung out. Like nobody's out there. And I'm sitting here going, I am in California, like having a, an incredible like outdoor experience with my family. Yeah. With these amazing trees, by the way. Like so many. as a kid. Yeah. Like I don't know about you. When you when you're a kid and you heard about the redwoods. It was my favorite thing. Right? Yeah. And yeah. I actually did it with my ex girlfriend. And it was amazing, man. It's a, it was like a profound experience. It is like touching those freaking trees. I I got real hippie. Like I got I was a tree. I was hugging trees. Yeah, they're two thousand years old. Yeah, they're huge. Yeah, it, and the roads are awesome too. It's the so roads, cool. everything. Like I had such a good experience, man. Did you go like, to the Goonie Town? Yeah, yeah. Hit what, the Goonie Town. I forget what it was. Uh, that Crescent you, City or you, uh, Eureka? Your is that what it is? It's something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's a real cool town. It's a super cool yeah. town. Like everybody had a great time. So we're out on the beach, right? Yeah. I'm walking. I'm walking with my oldest. We were we were out like just basically seeing. We, we were doing. I, I do these. Um. Um. Uh, what is it? it, it it's uh, exercises and courage is what I call them, or or uh, feats of strength, feats yeah. of strength, and <laughs> so I'm like just. It's basically like how long can you sit in the water? Like, yeah. you know, how long can you Challenges. hang from a bar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like feats of strength. Yeah, for so your we're kids. out there. Yeah. So there <laughs> she's out there just freezing her ass off in the Pacific Ocean. I'm like timing her. She she loves it. She's yeah. like super into it. So we're walking back and there's this dude and he's fl- he's fishing. And I was like, man, this guy's fly fishing in the ocean. Like, that's fucking cool. Oh, like, that's badass. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah, it's super cool. So I walk up to him and I just wanted to see what he was what he was what what the fuck was going on turns and, around he's wearing a black rifle hoodie and i was like shut <laughs> up i was like hey man what's up that's awesome and he was really like, yeah dude he's wearing a black rifle hoodie he's like who the fuck are you yeah he's like oh get away from me fucking psycho <laughs> I was like, ah, well. yeah <laughs> hey hey did I'm he recognize you yeah it took him a couple minutes i didn't say anything i was wearing a i was wearing a t-shirt black rifle shirt and black rifle running shorts as normal as per normal and yeah. probably a hat too to be honest with you and um yeah, it took him a couple minutes, but it was so cool. Was he like, but wait, are you? He was like, what, what are you doing out here? I'm like, it's, dude, I'm from Idaho. Oregon's like next door neighbors. Not a big deal. Like, it's a fucking big country, but it's not that big. That's really cool. What was he trying to catch? Just ocean fish with the fly uh, fly rod? He he was telling me, and I was like, it was like shad or some shit. Yeah, it's they're very know. particular because you have to, there's a tactic, right? It's like Whole a thing. specific type of fish you're fishing mm-hmm. for when you're. We flew out of Portland, came home. I will tell I, I, I know those of you that live obviously in California and Oregon, like you're probably used to it. But I was fully expecting. I haven't been in San the Francisco. The zombie apocalypse, dude. I haven't been in San Francisco in five five years. Same. I haven't been there like, in a long time. I, I was just in Portland because the Specialty Coffee Association thing was there, and I thought I was going yep. back in time to like COVID era because there were so many masks out there. Yes, there was. It was yep. like fucking the wild. airplane from Salt Lake going there everybody wears the ma- mask up yeah mask up for war. they're here with no mask <laughs> and, it, and they all mask up going like, back <laughs> there's like signs you know like you know promoting like you know vaccinations and stuff i was like these uh, these fucking guys have they got the news like have they heard about what's going on like what's going wow. like have they not heard it's like they're in this a, doesn't yeah, work this is like bubble they're in a bubble but now i understand it's a it's a political statement right yes it's but, not yeah it's not about like it, it's a virtue you, signal. It, yeah, you want to wear a piece of t shirt over your face, and you think that that's going to fucking protect you. Yeah, sure, man. It's just a political statement. That's all it is. So, that's all like, it is. got it. Cool. But Portland is such a beautiful city. Like, so I, I am, beautiful. I am Columbia not, River, is dude. Epic. I'm not. I'm not going to let. I'm not going to let these guys like take, take this nature. shit from me. Yeah, I'm not. Like, it's like I'm not going to let them take these like yeah. epic locations and co op them. And then be excluded from like, you know, sharing part of like, obviously Northern California is incredible. And I know that I started to feel cross survival in Northern California. Did you really? Yeah. Where at? Jackson. uh, Well, I lived in Jackson, which is. I don't even know what the, 
where the fuck that is. It's it's. I mean, it, it, a lot of Northern Californians wouldn't consider it NorCal, but it's east of Sacramento. Oh, okay. Uh, west of Salt Lake or west of uh, uh, South Lake Tahoe. Seriously? Yeah. So I I started it in that small little town in Ione, California. I O N E. It's an old gold rush town on the foothills of the Sierras. Why did you blow out of there? Because. I mean, there wasn't really room for expansion in that little location. Right. It's kind of it's kind of a small town, and I had to hide my guns in Zephyr Cove on the Nevada side of the South Lake. Oh, right. And right. so it was just getting. I was. I didn't want to get in trouble. That makes sense. Yeah, I didn't want yeah. to go to jail. For but if you were like in Nevada, it would have made no difference. Yeah, I used to teach. State. I used to teach in Nevada, and then the Amador County Sheriff, which is the county that I lived in, was like, "Dude, we're not going to do that." And like he told yeah. me personally, I'm like. All right, cool. Yeah. So I was in a sanctuary county, which is most conservative counties in, in California. I mean, there's a red belt running through California. Hmm. And I was doing, I spent a lot of time in San Francisco because I was consulting for Oracle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I did a four speaking engagement deal and how to make the commute up there. But I just didn't fit in, man. I, I knew I didn't. It, yeah. It just wasn't my vibe. I mean, I like California. I was born in Fort Ord. Yeah. I, I like California. <clears throat> I love all the nature, but. I need to get to the mountains. It's good to visit. Super awesome to visit. Awesome Please to visit. visit. Yeah, yeah. I was just at Jocko's place and it was amazing there. I mean, yeah. it was like San Diego. San Diego is so awesome. So good, dude. So awesome. The food is. I love Utah, but the food just is not yeah. great. It's it's not the it's not the same. And I don't yeah. know if like, you know the the what I would say is that the denim mafia. Like here in Utah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, the Canadian yeah, yeah. tuxedo mafia. Yes. Like I don't know if they just don't like food that has like spices. It's or like something. a pepper. It's like, oh yeah, pepper. Ooh, oh, that has a ghost pepper. You know, I might <laughs> think about, you know, having sex with a woman or something, you know? Like something I don't weird. know. Something weird. It, everything's I, bland. Yeah. 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 Everything's bland. Except for interesting fact, in Utah per capita. There's more searches for uh, gay pornography per capita than any other state in the union. Really? Yeah, it makes it the gayest state in the union. You know, that's the, fun. They shut fun down gay porn about time. Utah. You know, gay porn sites are shut down now. You can't even yeah, go on them. Not that I tried to. Yo, know, you haven't. Well, I tried to for this for research, research yeah. for this podcast, <laughs> and yeah, so you can't get on it. It's still declined as well, of like yeah. I think that's the whole thing, right? They they they're shutting off pornography, which I it's it's interesting to me that whether it's state or federal governments or whatever it is, they continue to think that if they intercede, or mm -hmm. if that's a word, that's they, not, it's not, it's it, okay. it sounds like it is. I know what you it mean. It sounds like it is. It, it sounds, sounds like, like a it real word. It should it, be a if word. They, it, it, <laughs> if, if they inject themselves yeah. into pre preventing people from looking at pornography, it will happen. Yes. And you're like, you know what you do? Yeah. It just just an FYI, because somebody else was like telling me this in the office. They're like, "Oh, we can't get on pornography." I'm like, I, "Like, aren't you younger than me? Do you not know how to use a VPN? Are you guys a are you guys fucking retarded? Or you like, Starlink? It yeah, doesn't like, it well, VPNs through the the stars? Yeah, like what the <laughs> fuck is going on here, man? Like, don't you guys like didn't you guys write write code? Like, how do how do you not? What do you saw? Oh my god, you got to be a cyber criminal to be like." <laughs> oh shit! I'm in a different location. I, th I think it, I think Mac actually comes with that feature. Can you, you imagine the first guy who hit it? He's like, oh, oh, oh dude. There, there it goes. There it's it over. goes. It's, it's over. over. Yeah. Fucking JC Penny catalog. First again. aliens, and now I can't get into porn. Jerking Fucking off the catalogs. AI might as well take over now. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing, though. I didn't. I can't. I I was taken back by that. Not that I saw it, but no, I was like, I, know, I heard I know, it. On I know the news. you've never seen it. I just don't. I don't yeah. do porn. Yeah, I, I do mean, people. Yeah. Uh, Are yeah. you interviewing me? No, I'm oh, just talking. Okay, okay, I'm just sorry. having a conversation with you. Yeah. I I did want to talk to you about the book Prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so over the show. Oh, fuck off. Hey, no, but seriously. So this is interesting because this is a book that you sent me. And he spells yeah. my name even. <laughs> E-V-E-N. Thank you for all... <laughs> The great years. <laughs> like what? First of all, I'm a, like you don't even it's know code. how to spell my fucking it's name. Fucking code. And then your call sign's even. And then love ya doll. I'm like, I don't even know what this means. 
So I appreciate oh. all of the the kind words. But I didn't sign that. My my people signed this. Of course they did. That's yeah. just a stamp. That's it's a just stamp. like that's <laughs> like even even like it's like you guys you you know you're gonna have thirty evens in your deck. Oh. So you're like fuck it, man. I'm going for this. Um, so my it's a whole, good read. It, it, you don't read though. You do audibles, right? I do both. On I, a run, listen to the audible. Yeah. I think you'll enjoy it. I will. Did you you read it? I did do the read, yeah. And Ray Porter, Ray Porter for Jack Carr's, he's the voice of Terminalist, which is a great book series. It is good. Oh, he did that. Ray Porter did? Ray Porter did the Ford for, because Jack Carr wrote the the Ford. And so he did the read for it. It's really cool. Um, Well, first and foremost, I think, why? Why why do you, why'd you you do this? Uh, Straight up, I wanted to market to a broader audience. Right. Uh, about preparedness and, and it sounds i mean there's i rarely mention phil craft in there it's only mentioned 373 times but is it okay good no, i'm not, glad that you've, that you've i don't mention to trim that back i i i really want wanted people who I, I heard mainstream wise a book has a different feel a different reach sure and so the person who reads who picks up the book is a little bit more deliberate about the things they do. I, and I don't know if this is true. I was just told this. So it's like, hey, if you want to compliment the things that you're educating on that you're passionate about, do a book on it. And so for me, it was literally structuring a very confusing and complex subject matter of fucking survival. Who, the, who knows what this shit is? Like, if you say, be prepared, what the hell does that mean? Most people are like, Oh, I'm, I got a pistol on me right now. I'm prepared. Like, mm-hmm. No, but that's not what it is. Right. So I, I wanted. I got, I got food different... storage. Yeah, I got food and water at the house in my fridge. Dehydrated food, man. I got enough. Yeah, like I have the the fancy rig. You know, or I got the gas can hanging off the back of my car. Whatever that is, it's it's not just that. It's a lot of things. And so for me, it was me making sense of what we were doing at Fieldcraft. That took nearly a decade. I mean, I've been doing this for nearly a decade. And kind of distilling out, hey, what works and what doesn't, and what's probable and what isn't. So I focused on the structure of that. I call it the pillars of preparedness, mm-hmm. but I broke it down that way. Well, I think that that's good. I think there's two two things to that, which is you're not what, interested at all in this. No, I am. Are you? Yeah, like I, Do, I think your wife would love this book. She's into preparedness more than you are. But she doesn't like you. Like the thing that to her, read it? No, she's or like me. You. She doesn't like me. Yeah. I knew it. Yeah. It, I knew it. She She hates me. No, my wife would my wife would my wife would like this. She hugged she, me a long time when we hugged. Did she? Just a little bit extra like uh, three seconds longer than normal. Okay. If we're not gonna talk about this, then we're gonna talk about <laughs> something called a rooftop tent. Looking for a quick and easy way to grab your favorite black rifle coffee roast? Well, you can find America's coffee on the shelves of your local Walmart. Stock up on your favorite roast, as well as several Walmart exclusives you can't find anywhere else. No need to worry about waiting for shipping or having to drive all the way across town to find your BRCC coffee. Whether you're filling up for an early morning hunt or just need to pick me up during a busy day, stop by Walmart and grab a bag of Black Rifle Coffee today. Because <laughs> I've got a rooftop tent and a 9 mil. I'm prepared, right? Yes. That's the way, I mean, honestly, if you think about when I when I when I look when I drive around Utah, one of the things that annoys the shit out of me is a rooftop tent. They're horrible. Okay, so first and foremost, who in the fuck needs to have a rooftop tent on a on Subaru? A Subaru. Yeah. And more importantly, at any point in time, at a drop of a hat, you got to be ready to go. You yeah. got to be ready to go. How long does it take to put a rooftop tent on a on a car? Is it a, is it a is it a it's big effort. thing? Yeah, it's a big, it's a big thing. Mounting okay. one, yeah, to a rack, it's a big thing. Okay, but why would you sleep on top of your roof when you have a Subaru? Sleep in the or, Subaru. Like, so what? What's going on with the ground these days? Has it become unstable? Has the ground? Yeah. The chances of earthquakes are scaring people. <laughs> is it? So they want to be on suspension. That is buffers. that what it is? I do. I don't know. I think the all of these things that we think are cool came from like people think Land Cruisers are cool. The Land Cruiser overseas is cool. Super cool. Because it's solid axle, turbo diesel. Yes. And they don't have all the regulations we have here. Mm -hmm. Here, you got inline six, independent suspension, 
And it's not the same thing. So you get somebody with a taco, a Tacoma, yeah. and they load it down with all the shit, not realizing they've already exceeded their max gross vehicle weight, their their low capacity, and it's dangerous. And so this these things need to be talked about, and well, I don't talk about them in the book. So Well, but this is what we, what we need to talk about right now is like the difference between what the trends – of what I would say, the trends in preparedness oh. and actual preparedness. Yeah, this is a good conversation. Because I look There's at shit. There's a lot shit, of those. There's a lot, yeah. right? In like the big yeah. trends, whether or not it's, it's like a, a, a rooftop tent, which by the way, I've had a few of these rooftop tents because I've, I put one on like the back trailer of, uh, we have a we have a uh, uh, events trailer, like with yeah. an espresso machine, a bunch of shit. Dude, it's the worst night's sleep you'll ever have. The worst. Like, it's horrible. The thing yeah. moves around like you got to chalk it. Like, yeah, my kids slept above me in this thing on the roof. Like, you can't be sleeping below anyone because they are moving around, shifting the weight all Const- on suspension. It's horrible. It's constant. It's the worst. And you night have to sleep. be level. Yeah, like, like, and if you just have a little bit of of angle, dude, you are you feel like your brain's telling your body. You're going to fall off this cliff and die Correct. the entire night Yeah, while you're in your rooftop tent on your Subaru in a parking lot. Right. It's just it, 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 a lot. You know my favorite one, though? Yeah. Your wife would appreciate this because she's in the survival aspect. Ferro rods. Like if you go to Walmart right now and buy a ferro rod, what, is that, what does that ferro rod look like? I don't know. It looks like this big. Like a oh, toothpick. Yeah, yeah. It's a novelty item. Yeah, it's a novelty. Most item. survival and preparedness in every single outdoor retailer are novelty. Yeah, and that aggravates me because it's like, when are you using a, f- a fire starter? You're using it likely as a novelty. You're using it to impress your kids, and you're demonstrating, and that's the thing, right? I yeah, get yeah. that. But if you if you told somebody you need to keep a fire starter in your kit because if you fall into a river in the middle of Idaho in the backcountry in the wintertime during hunting season and you need to start a fire quickly, it, your propane lighter might be saturated and you got to use a ferro rod or yeah, a, a fire starter. Well, if you pull out that little novelty toothpick while your hands are frozen, you're not going to be able to do it. No. So I went and I designed – I mean, I didn't design these. These things exist, but I, I, I went and sourced all the materials – Austrian magnesium is the best magnesium in the world. Everybody knows that. You don't Everybody even need to that. say that. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you even bring that up in the podcast? I know. It's Every com- it's common listener knowledge. knows that Austrian magnesium it's is the best. Peanut Everybody. butter, yeah. jelly. Yeah. It's like everybody knows. Fucking potatoes <laughs> come from Idaho. The best magnesium <laughs> comes from fucking Austria. <laughs> it's so true. Glocks as well. Yeah. Glocks come from Austria. Yeah. So. I, I I sourced these massive rods. You would be into it because it's huge it, rods. If you hold it in your hand, it would feel so familiar to you. <laughs> You'd be like, "Oh man, this feels this thing is light." So it's yeah, it's weird. So how disappointing. Do you, how do you kickstart? It's so, so fucking light and disappointing. Uh, uh, and then wood. Um, this is even better. There's no wood on the rod, so you use a bare rod with your fingers. I had. Redwood, not redwood, because you can't. You, that's illegal. I can't think you that. just admitted to, <laughs> to a felony chopping, chopping down a redwood. <laughs> it's legal in Utah. Yeah, but if you take uh, the wood, it's it literally can grip down in your hand, so you have good tactile grip to be able to scrape a lot of magnesium. And dude, it's like a sparkler. Like, like you go and it goes shh, just that's like the way that. it has to be. Shh, shh, just like that. That's the way it has to be. Yeah. I. I I've actually done enough around the rods, rods and, wood. and wood with friction. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're the expert. I am the expert at rods yes. and friction. There's no, there's, yeah. I, I, I can't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the magnesium, I, I, I think that sent me back a little bit because I just think that that's, that's a little bit of a gratuitous flex for you to put things out like that where <laughs> you're talking about. The link's down below. Yeah. <laughs> but I, that, that's a good one, though. No, it is. I, the fire starters. So the fire starters that I've used in, and like, I love this shit, right? So I love like. Yeah, it's I, fun. I love this stuff. Yeah. Like, I love primitive skills. My wife is like a pseudo primitive skills person, too. You know, starting fires with like flint and steel so and fun. fucking you know boat she doing the boat drill yeah thing. yeah we, we got the whole nine have yeah, you done them all drill, yeah 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 i've done them all i have i i ordered a bunch successfully? of them successfully successfully yeah oh you ordered them yeah you yeah. like bought them yeah 
I'm a fucking busy guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> you expect me to be like making making a goddamn bow drill? Is Kevin Estella what selling bow about? drills? Yeah. Off, I talked to Kevin and Kevin was like, man, I'll come I'll over. Hook it up. I'll raise your kids. <laughs> I'll fuck your wife. Like, it's Whatever awesome. It Whatever it takes. Kevin is a good people's Kevin's man. He's good people, man. He's, he's okay. handsome, too. He's handsome. He's a handsome devil. What else is there? There's got to be other... Um, no, wh- there's, a, there's a ton of shit. What's, uh, what, what else? There's got to be more to talk about here. Well, I mean, first and foremost, we got to talk about this book called <laughs> Prepared, a manual for surviving the worst case scenario. Uh... Dear Even. <laughs> I, I think that that's... Uh, well, we, I even talk, mentioned you in this book. I know. Barely. Barely. Like you talk you, you told some lie about elk hunting or some yeah. shit in there. So the resilient mindset. So I I want to go through some of these things. Are we going like through all of them? No, 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 not all. Come of them. on. Like, oh, your favorite then. My favorite. So here are the things that I, I'm looking at, which is like, why did you decide this was what you were gonna go with? Like why why these these what, pieces? Those pillars? Yeah. Um I, I did them in a hierarchy of priorities as most probable, mm-hmm. but most within your control. And what I mean is like most people would say to be prepared, I need to have my EDC and I need to have the pistol, the tourniquet, mm-hmm. the light, the knife, all the things. Yeah. And I would say, no, 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 no. That's not the start point. Yeah, certainly have that. It's like, it's like saying... Uh, on combat patrol, you need a rifle. Yeah, of course you need a rifle. But what's more important than a rifle is the principle of security. Right. Like when you understand tactics, techniques, and procedures, that's why it's broken down into three different defined things. It's not ju- We're not just talking about a specific tool. We're talking about the principle. Well, a resilient mindset, it starts between your head and having the ability to get beat down and get back up and building that resiliency before you could carry the gun. Mm -hmm. Because if you're fighting for your life and you don't have a resilient mindset, you'll quit. You'll faint like F E I N T you'll, you'll quit. But if you have a resilient mindset, that's a start point to push through adversity, no matter the circumstance, take out the gun, replace natural disaster or problem your worst day ever. And so a, a lot of people think I, I made this for like the zombie apocalypse. And it, and it says a manual for surviving um, a, a worst case scenario. But a worst case scenario isn't necessarily the zombie apocalypse. It could be a fucking vehicle accident. Yeah. It could be <clears throat> you chopping your fucking finger off in your backyard, putting your kitty pool together for right. your children. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why you do that. Like you should probably like get the right one. I just did that today and there was no Did you chop your finger objects. Off? Nearly. Yeah, but there's no objects around it that would in- impede that. Right. There were some electric electric things like a a pump hooked to a kiddie pool that plugs into a fucking wall. That makes sense. Who does that? That's a it's a kiddie pool. That's that that's that well designed. Me. I like, saw that and I was like, plug like, it in. That's plug son, that. go plug that in, soaking wet. Yeah, son, get over there <laughs> and play with things that involve electricity. I'm pushing them in the back with yeah. a broom handle. Yeah, 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 yeah right there. Put that, that socket in the sink. That's I digress. I. So this is more, uh, the resilient mindset is more of the cornerstone to what you would say is survival. Would you, or would it be the bedrock? Yeah, it's more of the bedrock. Let's okay. go with foundation. Foundation. Okay. Yeah. The start yeah. point. So that I want to, I want to go through these because I want to say, what do they mean? What do they mean to you in the context of that's the bedrock now planning we, we all kind of, I think we, we've unpacked planning quite a bit. We understand that planning, like proper planning prevents piss poor performance. We've, mm-hmm. all, we've all heard of that, right? That's so good. Yeah, it's though. so good. It is so, so good. good. But do you go through and talk about how to plan? Yeah. Yeah. All tangible. Exactly. I hate philosophy. And no, no, here's, here, let me re- rephrase that. You hate like Nietzsche and- I, He was my favorite. Oh, okay. He was my favorite. I- philosophy is the i think the point abstractly uh, which means i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about i'm just making shit up is philosophy is so important to extract ideas and thoughts that are provoking Mm -hmm. to get you to distill down into tangible takeaways like people who just talk on and on about the thing but don't define the thing which i talk about resilient mindset mindset is everything yeah no shit it's on a t-shirt it's on your hat 
but what else do you mean by that? Right. Like, how can I improve my mindset? So I talk about that specifically. And in every single chapter, I give specific examples on how you can improve whatever that is. Planning, it starts with a conversation. Like most people would think it starts with a five paragraph operations order. No, if you went to, if you went to ranger school or you grew up in special forces like me and you, yeah, it, it technically does. Yeah. I, I know my business plan, your business plan are, are near five paragraph operations orders. And that's how I think militarily. My mind processes information that way. But a civilian doesn't think that way. Not so how can they think it? Think about it. Mm -hmm. Have a conversation, which is technically in the Q&A course of action development or war gaming, mm -hmm. and then write down all the deficiencies in that conversation mm -hmm. through war gaming, which we do in a deliberate planning process right. um, called MDMP, military decision making process and ISO facilities, uh, which are isolation facilities where we plan for days sometimes weeks mm -hmm. and it's painful but it's important so do your fire plan hey where's the fire extinguisher we don't have one write that down right we need a fire extinguisher and then fill in the gaps it's 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 tangible things that you could apply to your life i like that i think because obviously being you know here in utah and kind of being in around i would say that that um you know survival culture you have a lot of people that are really focused on what I would say is the, the, the firearms aspect of the survival piece. Yeah. And I've had a lot of conversations with people around, but you have to look at what, what I would say is statistical probability of threat. Yeah. And most people, if they live in the state of Utah, in the city of Salt Lake, the, their their biggest threat is not going to be from a home intruder statistically. Mm -hmm. It's not. So do you have, to your point, do you have a fire extinguisher in your in your kitchen? Do you have one in your vehicle? Do you have like these are all kind of like the the the, the more mundane, less sexy things that people hate to hear about, but it's absolutely necessary with planning a survival, what I would say is is, is a survival plan. And they're not, they're not as cool, right? You can't get a magazine about like, you know, uh, you know, it, you know, fire extinguishers monthly, you know, and like, wow, look at this dope ass extinguisher, <laughs> dude. Like, check this out. You know, like, honestly, we that might be kind of cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Black but, multicam fire yeah, extinguisher. Fucking sick ass Ooh. fire extinguisher with some attachments. And a it's light. got music it's when got, you start. It's got a sick light on it. Yeah. You know? Like, I, I love this idea. Oh, we, we, like, it's a Making great idea. Making fire extinguishers sexy again. Yeah. Let's, let's bring them back. Ooh. But uh, most of what we're going to run in, st statistically, I would think if I were breaking this down into what we will encounter in our lives, just walking through our lives will be a traffic accident. Like, well, I wonder what the, it would be interesting to see, like pull, pull the actual data and see, you know, if you drive every day, what the odds between where getting into a, a, a collision with a drunk driver or somebody texting and driving with your kids in the car versus having a home intruder event. Like yeah. it has to be exponential between yeah. the two. There's it 6 million car accidents a year. Right. 2 million are injured. 40,000 Americans die in mm -hmm. vehicle accidents. I mean, that's, that also is going up mm -hmm. because the lack of attention we're paying to the road because we're putting on our makeup, eating a Subway sandwich, and why are, texting why at are the same time. you putting makeup on in hey, your car? I'm going to the White House, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's June. We're going to the White going House. Going to the White House. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you, statistical probabilities, where people lose it with, with probability and stats is they forget, like, again, principle. Learn first aid. You, you carry a tourniquet because you're worried about the gunshot. I'm telling you to carry a first aid kit because you're worried about the accident, the gunshot, the puncture wound, mm. the trip, fall, ankle sprain, yeah, yeah. all the things. So that's why it's important. Even self-defense is a bad stat when everybody when anybody quotes, well, how many people use a firearm in self-defense against whatever? And I would say, well, how many times would you be in a situation potentially – where you're acting as a responsible, good Samaritan mm -hmm. protecting somebody else. Right. Then the stat goes out the window because it's like, 
oh, that's a lot of exposure time. Yeah. So it, it has to do with environment, pattern of life, all those things. But the bottom line mm-hmm. is, if yeah, that, that's a really good point, which is environment, pattern of life. So I think, like, do you get into mm-hmm. environment, pattern of life? Hundred like, percent. How do you assess your own survivability based on how do you how a person lives? Because a person's survival plan is going to be much different if they live in Manhattan or if they live in you know Manhattan, New York versus you know uh, Nebraska, right in the middle of a cornfield. It's going to yeah. be so much different. So do you talk about mm-hmm. that specifically in your planning process and then yeah. unpack and organize the way that you're going to prioritize those things? We do. We do. Because the environmental factors, as we understand it from an operational perspective, dictate really everything, right? Mm-hmm. Because when you assess and analyze information to reduce risk to force, this is a right. military example, you do that by doing um, analysis of all the data mm-hmm. and then you operationally prep the environment, the OPE mm-hmm. of being offensive by prepping that environment based on the things that you analyzed. So we could do the same thing. If you're preparing for a wildfire and you live in a couple palm trees in Florida, then it's likely not a high probability. Right. So look at the statistics, look at the dangers, the right. hazards, the anomalies that happen to be frequent in your environment. I mean, if you live in Louisiana and you don't have a bug out plan because there's been very definitive cases of bugging out, including Katrina, or the lack of bugging out, which have led to the loss of human life. Mm -hmm. I mean, Buffalo, New York just had a storm where 20 plus people died. A couple people died exposed to the elements in the open on city streets. What? They dug 17 people out of banks of snow on city streets. A 22-year-old girl died in her car six minutes from home where she could see a front door 50 foot away, but she decided to bed down her vehicle the snow got above the muffler and she died of carbon monoxide. Oh poison. yeah. And it's like these simple things, you know, paranoia, uh, ego, all of these things that we have emotionally as a barrier to preparedness are what cost us our lives. Mm-hmm. And I hope most people who f- discover this, they discover it through trial and error, through fire, where they get tested they fail the test and maybe they survive and they have a life changing experience. Mm -hmm. I know this from training law enforcement. If you get shot in the line of duty, I I know guys who have written books on that exact moment and all the things that went wrong. But if we know those are the things that go wrong in the first place, why would we not be proactive with measures to prevent this from happening or mitigate risk to us in the first place, right. that's called preparing. And most of us don't think that way because we're complacent. I mean, we're just lazy, complacent people. I mean, it's a, it's a benefit byproduct of freedom. And if you're conscious and aware because you're just paying attention, mm-hmm. then, you're, then you're on board. If you're not, then you're just a complacent victim waiting to be injured or potentially killed. Well, I think there's a, also a part of that, which is people assume they, they, I don't know if assume, what they do is they forfeit their responsibility to the government and assume that it's the government's responsibility to maintain their safety. Yeah. And it's the government's responsibility to uh, provide them with their survivability. And I think that's, that's the difference between a very definitive cultural difference between a lot of Americans. Oh, Those huge. of us that decide... Yeah that we're actually going to own our destiny and we're not going to be looking for, you know, our buddies to come save us in the police force, which by the way, everybody needs backup, but like, that's not my first call, right? It's also not going to be my first line of defense because they're not, you know, five seconds away. (laughs) So unless you have a, a law enforcement officer in your back pocket, like, dude, sorry, same with the firefighter. Like my first line of defense is not, to call the fire department if I have a fire in my kitchen. It's to manage it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, hey, man, I, I'm going to gonna have to grab one of those dope-ass fire extinguishers that Mike Glover and Andy, Black a, a, Andy Stump designed. And $49.99. $49.99. It's got a trident on it. Cleared hot Navy SEAL fire extinguisher. Cleared hot. <laughs> that's a good name for it. <laughs> oh, we got to do a graphic mock-up. Right? Julie, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's what it is. Cleared Black hot fire extinguisher. Yeah, uh, when when seconds count 
first responders are minutes away. We well, know that. Yeah. So we know that. We know that. Yeah. Most people I, don't. Most people don't. And more importantly, they've decided to outsource their security and their survivability to other people instead of taking a proactive and responsible uh, interest in their own survivability. They decide that, that it's just the government's fault. And it's like, well, man, that, that, you need to shift your mentality. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, one, I, I have to live a free life. You know, I, I don't know how I could burden myself with the amount of psychological pressure of, of, of going out and doing anything if I only relied on other people to help me. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't change a tire. You can't fix your car. Yeah. You, you know, you can't apply first aid. You, you can't put out a fire. Like, like the amount of anxiety that those people must live in on a daily basis. But you can like, comment on Instagram. Yeah, but yeah, you can you, you can get them thumbs hot, bro. Them thumbs are hot. Burn it down. Them thumbs are hot, son. I'm gonna it, get that. But I mean, I feel bad. Honestly, I feel bad for those people because it's like they don't have any freedom. They don't have any individual freedom. Like the the amount of freedom that I think guys like you and I experience in our lives allows us to like go out and do epic shit. And that's not me bragging. I'm not trying to break my arm to pat myself on my back. I'm just like, I understand it. Like, dude, I can row a boat down, you know, a river. I can go scuba diving. I can so jump. Awesome. I can fucking, Who wouldn't want I can to take that, a, you know, four wheel drive truck and drive it across the goddamn desert. I, it's no, it's no big deal, man. Yeah. Like whatever. I got a sat phone. We'll travel. Let's go. But people live in these, these bubbles of anxiety. And the only thing that is preventing them from, from ultimately living a fulfilling life is getting something like this and putting a plan together for their own preparedness so they can actually live richer, more fulfilling lives. Because once you have a plan and you've got a skill set and you got the bedrock that allows you to actually go out and experience the world in a different way, fuck man, it it's becomes empowering. A, it, it's empowering. Yeah. It's freedom. Like th that's the thing that I love about like just this is a skill set and what I don't know if people have ever heard my philosophy on this. It's like, you know, tons of people waste all this time on like, and, and this isn't a beat up on anybody that does fantasy football or, or whatever, you know, watch, you know, like watching football or whatever it is, whatever people's hobbies are into. Yeah. But if people took preparedness and they said, this is a skill that I can curate and get into, and it's not for, you know, it, it's not for just a group of fucking wing nuts, right? It's actually really fucking cool. And oh, by the way, I can take a wilderness first responder course and I can take, you know, all these different really cool courses on, you know, first aid and overlanding and shooting and, and gardening and all these fucking really cool things. It enriches your life and gives you a, a sense of empowerment that allows you to live a free and fulfilling life with your family. Yeah. It gets you off your fucking computer, you know, gets you outside doing really cool shit. That's why I love this. Like like the Fieldcraft team and the guys that you've got over there, they're really providing what I think is people a sense of confidence and freedom that allows them to live a much richer and fuller life. Like when I think about that, there's no greater gift that you can fucking give somebody. Yeah. It's empowering, man. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you an example. This just happened. You'll get a kick out of this. Literally just happened. So before I came over here, um, I I checked my my mail, and I had a letter in my mailbox from somebody. Right. And, who was anonymous. And it said, it was hard to watch your bull calf suffer in isolated and horrible conditions, and your butch butchering of him young and leaving his head in the yard was disgusting and heinous. And I had a, a, a bull, yeah. a young bull steer mm -hmm. that was a Wagyu steer in my pasture, which is a nearly a half acre yeah. lot, grass fed. Um, and I extended his life actually by three months because of the winter. It was so cold. Right. And I did that because I wanted to put fat on him because right. he would taste better. Mm -hmm. And that nurturing and taking care of him his entire life nearly and then feeding him and investing in him and my kids feeding him and investing in him was a beautiful process the heber valley 
meat company, which is right down the road, they butcher on site. Mm-hmm. They pulled up a pickup, or pulled, pulled up a pickup truck, a big truck, a semi truck, yeah. and we pulled him out of the fence. They literally put him down right there in the yard. They cut his head off and they hang him up and they split him in half and they start quartering him to get him to the meat locker because mm-hmm. there's a period of time that he has to be uh, frozen. And his head was laying in the yard because it's a head yeah. of an animal. Right. Right. That's what happens when you butcher an animal. Mm-hmm. I didn't put the head on a stake. Like the head was on the ground behind bushes because I didn't want people driving by to see the head. Right. But somebody drove by my house and saw that. And they thought, oh, this young calf is isolated. Well, young steer that steers that live their lives, live their lives exposed to all the elements because they're hard as hell. That's what, that's what they are. And then I gave him a better life by extending his life and giving him 50 pounds of grain a day to finish him properly. L- like, l- do the numbers on that. Do the math on that. Yeah, yeah. that. The numbers are actually upside down. But I did that. Because I wanted to process him, have respect for life and him, gave him an ethical life, an ethical put down, hung him up, and now he's in my freezer and will feed my family for a year. But the mindset of America is exactly that anonymous letter to me. Yeah, yeah. That is so disgusting. How could you do that to an animal? Well, how could you drive your ass past my house, judge me, and then go into a McDonald's? Yeah. How can you do that? Well, you could do that because you're complacent. Mm -hmm. And- we, I will continue to live this life. I will advocate for this life. I will advocate for the idea of being prepared because it's empowering people. And when people wake up to that, like you said, it's an awakening. Mm-hmm. And that awakening is so powerful in a world absent of responsibility, absent of purpose and mission. And, and I see it all the time. We'll have people out here who are signing these books or I'll be signing these books for them. We'll have 100 people out here and they will all say the same thing. This has changed my life mm-hmm. because I'm bringing my family on board. It's improving our lives and, and I'm on board for this and it's given me so much power back. And that's important. That's, that's mm-hmm. what it's all about. Dude, it's it, running a business sucks as, as you know, I mean, you, you, you've had the complete opposite experience. Like everything's perfect. Everything's perfect with you guys. So good. Um, it's difficult. It's like I, a sauna. It's like, a, it's, a, it's, it's like, like a spa. 200 degree like a sauna spa every day. It's yeah. That you like, can't get great, out of. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I was just in it and it's like, that sucked. Um, but it's the purpose because I, I could have made more money in GRS, like after taxes, sure. like literally year to year, I would have made more money in GRS and my, our old job, my old job. But you wouldn't be as famous. I wouldn't be insta famous where people right. attack me for, for, <laughs> for, for cows, for killing my cow and eat, eating my beef. Yeah. But I, I, I think that that's a good point, which is like my... Like every person, just just being human is me is being a hypocrite. That, like that's the other thing. It's like just being human. You're a hypocrite. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Just living, breathing, existing, and thinking. You're going to be a hypocrite. Now it's all up to us to kind of decide, get up every day, and how big of a hypocrite we're going to be. Yeah. Like that's that's kind of yeah. the way we need to live it. And like like I talk to my kids about this all the time. I mean, I love the social experiment of 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 parenting because it's fucking fascinating to watch children grow up so and fun. like so much fun it's like by far my the, the, my single biggest sense of, of joy in my life same, by far like same. by like 10 country miles but i know and i think about it all the time i think about like the world that they're growing up in is you know it's much different than the world that i was growing up in and obviously the world is much different than the world that my dad and my grandfather and everybody else and the the thing that I see that that's happened every generation, and obviously, you know, we talk about this a lot, like together collectively, is that like there is a sense that being weak is okay, and that's not okay. Yeah, like, it's not. Yeah. And by the way, like like welcome to the fucking world of reality that we live in is that. Everybody's not equal. Like there are people that are going to accelerate accelerate themselves professionally ed- through their you know education and experience, physically, professionally, intellectually. Like it doesn't matter. Like you know, saying that you and I are fucking equal is not. You're two hundred and thirty pounds. I'm one hundred and sixty. Like there are things that you're going to do. Like 
10 times better than I am. And there are things that I'm going to do better than you. It's like, that's the beauty of being fucking human. Yeah. Right. And it's what you get up and decide to do with like this, our, our brain and our physical capacity every day, which ultimately defines us. Like, why would we want to live in a sea of mediocrity where everything is acceptable and ultimately weakness prevails? That's not the world that I want to live in. And that actually scares me the most about the future for my children because I don't want them to, to believe that being weak is okay. Yeah. Being strong, having courage, standing up for what you believe in, having value, like believing in something other than just like some pathetic rant of a politician. Like, fuck man. Like, yeah. That's the beauty of this. Like in the, the, the ethos of preparedness, being responsible for your life, like being the first line of safety for you and your family. Like for me, I think that, that you know, even from my, you know, my life actually, as I, as, as we look into the future and even the last, you know, 10 years, that's always given me a sense of confidence. If the world turns upside down, guess what family? I got you covered. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like there's no better sense of confidence and mindset that a, a father can have to their family knowing guys, and especially going in like 2019, like right March, 2019, when everybody thought like the zombie apocalypse was going to go down. And I was like, shit, this is like an old comfortable shoe fellas. Like time to go. And it wasn't like, I'm not one of those guys. And I don't think you are either. Nobody's looking forward or wanting this to happen. Yeah. It's just a matter of, Prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Yep. But I think with the the you know what you built over at Fieldcraft, what you continue to do, man, it's it's absolutely fucking. It is, it's a public service. That has to be encouraged, and we gotta fucking spread the word. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that, man. I'm trying. Well, everyone, this has been Mike Glover. He wrote a book called Prepared. <laughs> It's a manual for surviving the worst case scenario. <laughs> thank you, Mike. I love this inscription. Even thank you for all the tea. Like I, <laughs> once again, my name is Evan. Thank you. Uh, I, actually, a lot of people call me Andy. Andy Stump. <laughs> this is uh, Evan and Mike signing off. Thank you guys for listening. Go out and get prepared. Get it. Joining the Black Rifle Coffee Club is like setting your coffee delivery to autopilot. As a club member, you get your favorite premium BRCC roast delivered fresh to your doorstep. All you have to do is pick your coffee, select the amount you want, then set the delivery schedule, and you're done. Easy as that. Not only will you get to knock coffee off your grocery list for good, but you also save cash over time since members get free shipping on deliveries. Club members also get exclusive discounts with partners like Phil Craft Survival, Cryptech, Sig Sauer, and more. Join the Black Rifle Coffee Club today. Start saving and enjoy the peace of mind that your coffee has been taken care of. That concludes today's training. Any questions? Woo! Drum titties, boy!